Well, welcome everyone to today's council meeting for March 28th. We will begin with our land acknowledgement that we do weekly. So the town of Innisfail acknowledges that we are meeting on Treaty 7 territory, the ancestral and traditional territory of the Blackfoot Confederacy, Kenai, Pakani, and Siksika, as well as Sutina First Nation and Stody Nakota First Nation. We acknowledge that this territory is home to the Métis Nation of Alberta Region 3 within the historical Northwest Métis homeland. We acknowledge the many First Nations, Métis and Inuit who have lived in and cared for these lands for generations. We are grateful for the traditional knowledge keepers and elders who are still with us today and those who have gone before us. We make this acknowledgement as an act of reconciliation and gratitude to whose territory we reside on. So we will move into 2.1. Uh, any additions or deletions? No, can I please have someone make a motion to adopt the agenda? Okay, thank you, Councillor Wing. All in favor? Okay, so we're going to start today. It's going to be a fun day today. We're going to start, um, going to do a presentation to our former mayor, Jim Romaine and Councillor Danny Reberger. Is this working? Is this working? Okay. So on behalf of council administration and our staff, it's an honor to present you with a small token of our appreciation for your service to our community. Jim, thank you for your 23 years of service, including two terms of mayor. And Danny, thank you for your eight years of service. You both represented council on many town of Innisfail committees, as well as external committees, and always provided a strong voice advocating for our community. You brought forth many important ideas and projects and always worked hard at making Innisfail a better place for all. Without doubt, you have succeeded. So again, thank you for all you have done and will continue to do for Innisfail. And please know how much your service is appreciated. I think that where it all started was in about 1985 when we were building the swimming pool and I was on the rec board at that time and uh, it was a very, very uh, big deal to, to the town getting a new aqua center and stuff so I, I did, uh, it kind of pushed me a little further to run for council so in 1988. serious, uh, I guess, development through the years that I've really enjoyed working on. One of the biggest ones was the downtown revitalization program. It was a three-year program, so it, it ate up just about every extra MSI dollar that we had to do that project, but it was, uh, I think, very successful and I've been there for a long time coming. So anyways, I, I, I don't have much else to say, uh, Mayor Barkley. <laughs> I've always had trouble remembering this lady's name. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've had it printed. It's, it's part of it. Yeah. It's imprinted on my uh, laptop up there. <laughs> but anyways, uh, thanks a lot. It was a pleasure working with you and, and the majority of the council over here. <laughs> Thank you.
so uh, you know, Jim was a, a big push on the, the skate park and that kind of sat doing not much for a few years. And um, it was after budget, Mayor Lane said at the time, let's do the skate park and we really pushed that forward. So we should be grateful for that as well. Well, I wasn't here quite, quite as long as Jim. Um, but being on council is a very a rewarding experience. Uh, these chambers is one of the projects we did along with council, former Councillor Taylor, you know, and uh, states. So we did a lot in my eight years and I don't claim to take credit for any of it, just being part of the team. Uh, you see the results in the way fit wayfinding signage and the skateboard park and uh, all the projects that a lot of the projects that these guys are working on we started on and that's how the, the ruling by committee works right everybody contributes and it was a great learning experience and i would recommend it to anybody to try to be, be good like it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you very much for the recognition and uh, good luck to you all All right, well, thank you again for your service. It's greatly appreciated. So we will move on to 4.2 and the CAO report with CEO Becker. Thank you, Mayor Barkley. The report is there for council's review and question. Just a couple of highlights for you. Um, although we can take questions uh, for any of the projects, but just want to highlight one, and that is regarding the Aquatic Center Recreation Complex integrated project delivery process has been initiated. The administration has uh, met on several occasions um, as we are later part of this week. It is anticipated in the near future, council will be part of, uh, we'll pull you into this process to better understand what uh, the integrated project delivery process means. And then of course, uh, achieve and confirming your vision associated with this project. Uh, there has been uh, several engagements. Um, I know council, council, uh, the mayor, but uh, administration has undertaken recently, as you see on the reports so of several business engagements, also supporting council with their engagement with the Chinook's Edge School Division Board of Trustees um, on March 21st. So soon the Placing and Safe Community Committee will meet the new staff, or, or sorry, Sergeant. Uh, Sergeant Ian Imey has come to us from, from, from Red Deer. Um, he will be attending the meeting on Thursday to meet uh, the committee and then onwards there into council to, to have some conversation. Again, uh, I'd be happy to answer any of your questions regarding any of the projects or anything to do with administration operations. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, CEO Becker. Does anyone have any questions? Anything in the report? If not, I will have someone make a motion, please, to accept this as information. Mayor Barkley will make that motion. Okay, thank you, Councillor Dunham. All in favor? Carried. And 4.3, uh, the Council Action Control, we will review. Councillor Heistad. Thanks, Your Worship. Uh, just a question on the, um, the Centennial Park, um, uh, CEO Becker. Um, just wondering when we were gonna loop back on that one. Mayor Berkeley, Councillor Heistad, um, we are slating an engagement <clears throat> with council next Monday so far. As we prepare the agenda, that's what's uh, that's what the expectation is at this given time. Okay, thank you. Okay, if there's no further questions, I'll or we'll have someone make a motion, please, to accept this as information. I so move, Your Worship. Okay, thank you, Councillor Harrison. All in favor. Thank you. Okay, and we will move into community services and we're going to do presentations for this year's community, last year's, I guess, 2021 Community Service Awards. So I will invite uh, Kane Williams to come forward and start the proceedings. Wonderful. Thank you, Mayor Barclay. All right. 
So we'll try to use this one as best we can. Um, tricky. <laughs> I guess it'll be a seated chat for this. Um, but yes, thank you very much for allowing us the opportunity to come here and present uh, the Community Awards for 2021. So uh, this is a long stranding tradition that we have. It goes back over 30 years with some of these awards. Uh, typically they've been presented at a gala, um, but because of the circumstances as they've been, we haven't been able to host that gala for the last couple of years. So we really appreciate the opportunity to come here and celebrate with council. So we'll be presenting five awards today, and uh, it's absolutely my pleasure to be here on behalf of the awards committee um, as the representative to uh, present these awards. The first one that we're going to present is the Community Arts and Culture Award. So this is an award that is presented to an individual or organization that provides arts and culture uh, activities or opportunities for the community, participated in art and culture activities as a local, regional, provincial, or national level. And our winner for the 2021 Community Arts and Culture Award winner is our own town councillor, Dale Dunham. Congratulations, Dale. I'll just take a little bit of an opportunity just to let you guys know the difference that Dale makes. I know it's it's no it's no secret around here, but Dale is somebody who embodies the term community builder. He works tirelessly to create and build and innovate community initiatives, and he is somebody who not only has vision for something new and exciting that can be done, he jumps into a project with both feet and inspires others to do the same. Uh, the business that he and his partner own the Coffee Cottage, has grown from a local favorite restaurant to a hive of activity and a reflection of Innisfil, a space that is welcoming and that gives people a feeling of belonging. It serves as a family room, a game space, an art gallery, among many other roles. It featured profiles for the Real Talk for Men campaign in 2021, and lately has been a gallery space for artists of Aspen. Dale is a leader in the community and helps Innisfilians tap into their creativity. He is a leader behind the Innisfil Pride Festival, the Lantern Festival, and the Festival of Trees. Each was a new for 2021 celebration and offered something that was inspiring, engaging, and beautiful to our community. They, they showcased not only how important arts and culture are in Innisfil, they also gave back to Innisfil and inspired others to give back and put their own creativity forward. The effort showed significant perseverance, and these events were created at a time when it was particularly difficult to plan and host events, as most of us know, uh, let alone create new ones. And there was three new ones, it's incredible. A time when they were very needed and when people were looking for connection and ways to be part of their community. Um, it should also be noticed, noted that he is an incredible contributor to our community as a volunteer. His work with Welcoming Inclusive Community Committee, the Anti-Bullying Initiatives, and Town Council all work to make life easier for people who need it and add culture to our town. He helps others so that they contribute in their own way. On behalf of the Awards Committee in the Town of Innisville, we are proud to present Dale with the Community Arts and Culture Award for 2021. If you'd like to say a few words, you're more than welcome, sir. Well, if anybody that knows me, if it's to speak or not to speak, it's generally speak. So um, <laughs> on Lake Miro, Maine and uh, Councillor Reber, I, uh, I have to write things down. So just have a little something here I'd like to read um, that I'd like to thank everyone for this award. I'm truly honored. Um, I wouldn't re be receiving this Community Arts and Culture Award if it wasn't for the dozens of incredible community members who have stepped up to volunteer over the last year. Be it one person or a couple of people that have an idea or share a vision, but it takes many more to realize that idea or vision. I'd started a list of people that I had pleasure of working with over the last year, but after about the 20th name, I decided that might not be the best approach. So instead, I just wanna say thank you to everyone that has helped me on the events and committees and to thank those that have allowed me to be part of their events and community building initiatives. I also wanna do a special thanks to my partner, Sean, who no matter how harebrained my ideas are, he always stands behind me and supports me and becomes a part of it. 
And one other thing, I just want to remind everybody that there are a lot of fantastic events coming up this year. There's a lot of other groups that have stepped up to create new events. And I want to encourage people to help out, volunteer, support. Um, a lot of people look for things outside of our community to do. They, you know, it's great to travel, but we have to realize that there are a lot of things happening here. And for us to build a better community, we need to support our community and that's supporting the arts and culture. So thank you all very much. Is it okay to speak into it or should I be taking a step back from it? What's, what's the consensus? Just yours, Warren? Okay, then I won't, yeah, uh, have my mouth all over the microphone. Okay, right on. Sure, if you want to, if that'd be more comfortable. Just over. Well, I don't wanna, I don't wanna have my back to anybody, but I guess it does happen. You have to make the choices. Okay. Congratulations, Dale. Very well deserved. And uh, we did have multiple, we did have a lot of, of great, sorry, I'll just say this just overall. We do have an incredible number uh, of nominations and there's so many deserving people in this, in uh, when awards like these are presented that you can't recognize anybody, but we are very fortunate to be able to recognize the people that we can. Um, so the next award that I, we will present is our Leaders of Tomorrow Award. All right, so this is... Uh, a student enrolled in full-time studies who resides within the Innisfil area, uh, provides outstanding contribution to their community through volunteerism and inspires others to give back to their community. Uh, and the winner for uh, 2020 was Athena Pare. Uh, mentioned. Uh, she is the recipient of our 2021 award. She's an example of a young Innisfilian who goes out and makes a difference in our community. An active leader and volunteer, uh, she comes up with an idea and does the work to see it through. She's a regular volunteer devoting her time to multiple organizations. The Historical Village, the Innisfil Ski Hill, and the Youth Ministry are, are three such. Uh, she volunteers for multiple events and she's always uh, engaging with guests, young and old, and she brings an enthusiastic approach to them. Uh, at the ski hill, she volunteers in multiple different capacities, even sometimes being an instructor, from what I understand. Uh, an avid snowboarder, uh, she takes on the role of teacher to help others improve their abilities and gain confidence on the snowboard. Uh, as part of her youth ministry, she works with younger members of the ministry to help them be a part of the efforts. Uh, this happened both through her high school and locally, so trying to make a difference throughout. Uh, a standout of Athena's list, the way that she gives back to the community, was with uh, the Search for Hope. And this was uh, her take on a scavenger hunt that had people going throughout Innisfail. Uh, there were stars that were strategically like me, uh, placed throughout town and they would lead from one to the next. And this happened in uh, right in the middle of pandemic, I think when just about everything was. Yeah, and it was, it was such a hit and it was so, again, so difficult to try to come up with something that was positive and could you know, get people out doing things. Um, but in the right way, in a safe way, uh, that it was just such an incredible novel approach that after you did it for a couple months, it said, hey, can we do it again throughout the summer? So that was a pretty cool moment. Uh, but it was inspiring, it was inclusive, and it was something that any good, anybody could participate in. Um, volunteering is a big part of their family. I know the family is here, uh, wonderful. So I know her twin sister, Acacia, mother Linda, can also be seen at this, a lot of the same events. So it's, it's incredible. Uh, she was described as em uh, empath empathetic, innovative, and somebody who leads by example. Uh, she will continue to make a difference as she works towards her Bachelor of Education degree. I just want to say congratulations, Athena. Great job. so many people who are volunteering in the community and I just happen to be someone who has a lot and is trying to consistently do it but something as simple as volunteering out and let's say you're helping out at the food bank or you're helping your friend because they can't get outside as much maybe it's because they're worried still they need help getting groceries or maybe it's just everyday thing you just decide oh I'm going to help one person today and then I'm going to help someone else tomorrow 
it's those kinds of acts that bring a smile to someone's face. It makes them feel better. And it's something we should try consistently. And in the end, we want to live in Innisfil. We want to stay in Innisfil and live in a community that's going to embrace everybody and we're all going to have a good day. We're all going to have a good week. We're all going to have a good month. And for the whole time that Innisfil remains here. So we have to be that first. We have to be the first group that says, we're going to make Ennis feel better just by something simple. So, thank you. Great. Awesome. Thank you, Athena. Thank you for those words. I love it. It's inspiring because we're going to get people going out volunteering right away here. I love it. <laughs> Uh, so the next one up is uh, the 2021 Sports Team of the Year Award. Uh, so this is a local sports team that has demonstrated excellence in athletics. Uh, they've received recognition for their achievements, um, and they've competed at a local, regional, provincial, or national level. And the winner uh, of the Sports Team of the Year for 2021 is the Innisfil Dolphin Swim Club. And they're being represented by their head coach, Josh Kitty. Thank you. Yeah. You want me to run through kind of some of the stuff? You guys have an incredible list of things that you did over the last little while. That would be great. Yeah? Okay, let's do it. Because it is impressive. Like, the amount of work that the Dolphins have put in over the last while is just incredible. Um, so they are a premier competitive club in the province. Uh, they have swimmers that come into Innisfil from Red Deer Old Sundry to train up with their hearts here. Uh, competing in the Alberta Summer Swim Association. Uh, the Dolphins were actually ranked top five in the province for years. Um, and in, 2020, in 2019, the club won the Alberta Regionals for the first time in the club's history and finished fourth in the province. But in 2021, uh, the Dolphins were ranked first provincially, which made them provincial, championship, uh, provincial champions. Uh, an amazing achievement as the club was able to best teams from Edmonton, Calgary, and other Alberta clubs, despite having less registered swimmers due to restrictions. Uh, in 2021, the Dolphins shattered club records. Uh, they, they set 10 new ones and individually, uh, 24 of the 50 swimmers in their age seven to 17 um, were ranked in the top five in the province for their stroke. Um, and actually there was eight swimmers who were ranked first uh, in the province for their age. Uh, Paige Dunbar, Aubrey Halderson, Kenzie Hickman, Ryan Lean, Ryan Falk, Edson Embargo, uh, Mason Hickman, and Jacob Midland, uh, with another five swimmers ranking top three for their age. So uh, their performance in 2020 was incredible. It, uh, in swim meets, they would often fill the entire heat. So that's everybody after you progress right to the end of the heat. Sometimes it would be six to eight swimmers, and they would be all dolphins because it was so dominant. Um, they attended three swim meets, original meet, and then they had a virtual ASSA summer challenge. Um, they won two, two of the three of the meets, and then they won the regional meet, and then that summer challenge, which it stood in for provincials for last year, which yeah. is oh. incredible. Um, and just another really cool note about the Dolphins, and another reason to be proud of them, is just the incredible sportsmanship that they show. Uh, their nominator noted that officials, other coaches, and parents often comment on the positive attitude uh, the optimism, the hard work, the focus, and the passion that they bring to each competition. And it's thought that that's created a practice. So uh, where swimmers, uh, despite being an individual sport, an atmosphere of support has been created. Uh, this started when older swimmers began to mentor younger swimmers uh, during practice events like Senior Swimmer Coach Day. Uh, they reinforce a positive uh, team environment where the oldest swimmer knows the youngest swimmer because you know they're, they're coming in and they're coaching. So the older swimmers are coming in to make sure that the younger ones are are a part of the team. Uh, the environment of the Dolphins has all ages be encouraging and cheering each other on. So yeah, uh, they'll be receiving a gift card so they can celebrate together. Unfortunately, I don't think we can get all 50 swimmers in here for today, um, but we're very pleased to have Josh here. Yes, yeah. no. so congratulations, Josh. Yep. want to say a few words you're welcome to yeah i think all i really have to say for this is mostly thank you to the people who made it happen so that's thank you to the parents who bring their kids to every practice because our practices are five days a week for 
four months of the year. So that's a lot of practicing for a lot of these kids. So thank you to the parents. Thank you to our executive who let me and my assistant coach, Victoria Wagstaff coach, and they handle all of the booking the pool, figuring out costs for the pool and everything like that. So thank you to them. And thank you mostly to the swimmers who show up ready to work every single day. So that's all I really have to say for that. Good job, John. Yeah. Thank you, Josh. Thanks for taking the time. I know, I think you had to come right over here after, uh, after class. So Josh hustled to get over here, not unlike his team. Um, all right, so the next award that we're gonna present today is uh, the Athlete of Year Award. So uh, in the past, there have been male and there have been female athletes of the year. Um, that's something that we might continue with in the future. Uh, but for this year, we just decided that it was going to be a one athlete of the year. Uh, so this is a local athlete that has demonstrated excellence in athletics, uh, received recognition for achievements, and then either competed at a local, regional, or provincial level. Uh, so our athlete of the year for 2021 is uh, Mabel Fidel. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, uh, Mabel is recognized as our sole athlete of the year. Uh, she's an extraordinary woman, woman who embodies uh, what a true athlete is. At the age of 12, Mabel sets a high standard for herself, both in life and the community. Uh, currently enrolled at St. Marguerite's. Yeah. yeah. And a multi-sport athlete. She's pushed herself to excel in hockey, volleyball, and cross country. And uh, her nominator noted that committing to three sports, um, especially when they're concurrent like that, is, is an extreme challenge. Um, but according to her, according to the nominator, she makes it look easy. So <laughs> congratulations. Uh, while practicing for hockey and volleyball, uh, she found it hard to make cross country teams running practices. So like so many of us during the pandemic, uh, Mabel took it upon herself to train and come up with her own plan. Uh, she demonstrated her strength, determination and grit by earning a silver medal in the Chinook's Edge North Athletic Association uh, cross country finals. And then uh, she continued to prove herself when she's finished fifth um, at the Central West Alberta Junior High School Athletic Association and actually ended up beating the person uh, that got the gold medal in that earlier one. Specific to note in there. So uh, She was one of four grade seven girls to make the senior volleyball team in 2021, which is an incredible accomplishment um, considering they never played volleyball before, but showed her coachability and determination as you started in the position of middle hitter and then adapted and grew into starting center which is a pivotal position on the team. Uh, the team was made up of grades seven to nine um, and Mabel was one of the youngest players on the team. She earned a starting spot and was actually had a leadership role. So incredible. Um, with her positivity and leadership, uh, Mabel and the team earned a playoff berth uh, and competed with the best teams in central Alberta. So that's cross country and that's volleyball. There's still hockey, right? <laughs> so, Currently, Mabel is a center with the U13A Red Deer Sutter Fund uh, Chiefs girls hockey team. Uh, made the decision in, to go and play for the team as there was no local female only team to join. Uh, a dedicated two-way center who can create offense and is very responsive defensively. Uh, she excels in her own zone and on face-offs. Uh, the Chiefs have done incredible things this year. Uh, they've gone the entire season without a defeat. And so not once have they lost this year. Uh, that's through tiering, regular season play, tournament, and even the playoffs. So um, correct me if I'm wrong, but you guys are on your way to provincials right yeah. now. So that's going to be coming up here. So we'll be cheering you guys on. Thank you. Uh, a fun fact is actually Mabel was part of the team of the year last year. Uh, so in 2020, we recognized the Adam B. Flyers hockey team. Um, and yeah, you're a part of that team. 
And then your father was actually the coach of the year last year. So sometimes there's a trend with these things. Uh, according to the nominator, uh, Mabel is a powerful young athlete who already knows what it looks like to work hard behind the scenes so she can shine when it comes to game time. Uh, her love and passion for sports drive her not only be, to be successful at them, but to ensure that others around her are succeeding. Uh, she has a long and athletic, or long and exciting athletic career ahead of her that has laid a solid foundation of integrity, worth, ethic, and skill. Mabel Waddell, congratulations on being the athlete of the year. When I heard I was being recognized for Athlete of the Year for Innisfil, I was so excited. I love playing sports. They have been one of the best parts of my life. Not only is it super fun, especially when we win, but it's allowed me to meet so many amazing people. In volleyball, cross country, field across, box across, badminton, and hockey. My teammates inspire me and encourage me and have became my great friends. Shout out to my girls, Sutter Fun Chiefs, heading to provincials this weekend. I've had many incredible coaches that pushed me and believed in me when I didn't. Thank you to Mr. Clawson for your encouragement and support and for sharing your passion for sports. I've had many coaches that have helped me grow and learn. Thank you to Coach Craig, Coach Chris, Coach Lenny, Coach Phil, Coach Jeff, Mrs. Skinner, Mrs. Clark, Mrs. Baxter, Coach Dave, Coach Devin, Coach Mike, Coach Mark, and last but not least, my dad, Coach Johnny. <laughs> to my brother Finn, who has always been my number one competition since the day I was born. Even though you didn't know it was a, a world championship on the line every single time. <laughs> Thanks for all the passes, playing pepper in the dark, practicing face-offs, and taping my stick when we were running late to a game. Thank you for your, and lastly to my parents, grandparents, and family. Thank you for your undying support. You are my favorite pets. Thank you. Awesome. Congratulations, baby. Good luck this weekend. All right. So I mentioned that we had five awards to give out today. Uh, well, the last one is kind of our big one. It is uh, the Citizen of the Year Award. So uh, this award is given to uh, someone who, through volunteerism, uh, they are somebody who provides a distinguished voluntary service and, had, and has had a significant impact on the community, have a minimum of five years continuous voluntary service and make outstanding contributions to the community which positively impacts the quality of life in Innisfil through his or her commitment, skills, outreach, support and leadership. It's a lot there, um, but this is a very deserving uh, recipient of this this award uh, for 2021, the Citizen of the Year is Heather Taylor. I, yeah, yeah, you, you're welcome to come up. I might be a long stand because it's a little longer than some of the others. Just. It's safer, I think, with Mayor Barclay. Um, but right on. Okay, so. A selfless leader who has taken on many roles and is always willing to help and provide insight, Heather Taylor has an incredible track record of helping in this film. Her impact is wide ranging. She has helped further this community in many areas. Originally from Swift Current, Saskatchewan, uh, Heather came to Innisfil in the late 1970s from BC. She worked in banking for almost three decades and took on a role in real estate for 13 years. Heather demonstrated the importance of volunteering in her community immediately after coming to Innisfil. Uh, immediately or soon after arriving, she joined the Royal Canadian Legion uh, branch number 104, believing in its mandate to connect the community and never forget those who have served for their country. Heather served on the Innisfil Legion's executive for 10 years uh, in roles ranging from vice president to president uh, to past president. Not one to shy away from a challenge, Heather was an important player in major projects for the Legion. She was instrumental in fundraising for the community bus. She sought sponsors, uh, community partners and municipalities, among other groups, to raise four, uh, $450,000 uh, to fund the community bus in the 2000s. It is impressive to see more than a dozen organizations come together to make this project happen. Oh, no, it's not enough. <laughs> I thought I was loud. Um, okay, but it's, 
impressive to see so many organizations come together to make this project happen. And you only need to look at the bus itself uh, to see how many groups came together for that. Um, as many of you know, the vehicle serves as an important link between the community and others, helping sports teams and other organizations represent our town. Uh, among them, the Eagles, uh, the town of Innisfail, local schools, and other, gr other groups in central Alberta still, still, still see major benefits to this day. Her talent for fundraising and leadership was also instrumental in the acquisition of the CF-104 Starfighter. Uh, you might know that as the jet that's featured prominently outside of the Legion. Uh, it has become a landmark for our town and as a daily reminder of the many roles that service in the armed forces can take. Heather helped this project by fundraising and securing in-kind donations, uh, encouraging community partners to join in the effort. The jet was actually sourced from Germany and after it was decommissioned from the Canadian Armed Forces use. So no small task, it had to be brought across two continents. Well, a continent, an ocean, and another continent to come here. It's incredible, but a big part of the fundraising um, was Heather. She uh, was a part of the literary and poster contest that is held annually by the Legion to connect younger generations to the significance of Remembrance Day. Uh, they collect essays, poems, and posters, and Heather has been part of this effort for 15 plus years. Uh, it's an important activity and reflection for youth that can connect them uh, with the efforts and sacrifices that our, that our veterans have made. Other highlights of her work include uh, attending the Dominion Convention in Halifax, and of course, each Remembrance Day, um, the most important day of the year for the Legion. Heather was actually awarded with a lifetime membership uh, for all the contributions to the Innisfil Legion. Uh, and that's not it. Uh, and there's so much more. Uh, she's an incredibly valuable part of the sports scene in Innisfil. Uh, she volunteered on the Innisfil Curling Club's Board of Directors, uh, has presided over the Innisfil Ladies Golf Club multiple times, and was actually the director of the Innisfil Golf Club for three years. Um, and at one point, she was representing Alberta at Fredericton, New Brunswick for the tournament. From 2010 to 2017, uh, Heather served as a town councillor uh, for the town of Innisfail, so that was two terms. Uh, she attended dozens of meetings, met with many citizens, heard the concerns of, of the town for years, and during that time she served on every committee that councillors could sit on. Uh, highlights from that, town, or from that time included the downtown revitalization project, as noted uh, with the presentation of Mayor Romain um, and Councillor Reberger, uh, but also the significant renovations to the town office, not the, <laughs> the room that we're currently in, um, but also the opening of the library learning center. And she notes the introduction of the pace bus uh, as a special highlight for her. So that's a way that people that have disadvantages or, or disabilities um, can get around town. Uh, Heather has changed gears since that time, but has not slowed down. Uh, her focus has shifted towards helping seniors and working to address issues of food security in Innisfail. She served on the town's transportation committee and the age-friendly committee, helping to establish the van which will accompany the pace bus in the near future. A little bit of a theme here, hey? Getting people moving with buses and getting people around. Uh, she also took on the important role of community coordinator with the Innisfail Food Bank, helping them through a period of change and growth and continues to work with the Innisfail Food Bank to this day. Uh, she's been described by one of her distinguished colleagues as someone who's a hard worker, has a talent for fundraising, who takes actions, and is great to work with. Uh, she was also described by another colleague as somebody who would listen to all sides, consider what the other side was saying, and could be flexible enough to actually, you know, change your viewpoint or see things on the other side, something we don't get all the time these days. Um, but she's an incredible easy... <laughs> I just, I, that's a quote. Someone who has an incredibly easy person to work with and somebody you could trust to do the job right and complete it. She is valued for her knowledge, wisdom, leadership, concern for the community and her point of view. So yes, on behalf of the, the awards committee, I'd like to congratulate you, Heather Taylor, with the Citizen of the Year Award for 2021. So I'll take the opportunity to just let everybody know. So 
this is the actual awards presentation. We will be doing more of a kind of public address sort of thing. There will be some efforts made through social media uh, to recognize all of our award winners. And that'll also give the community a chance to, you know, say congratulations to our very deserving winners. So look for that. Uh, that'll probably be in the lead up to volunteer week. So in April, but yes, congratulations. Heather, did you want to come up and say a few words? Well, I didn't write a speech. I thought I'd be fine. Um, uh, thank you for my, to my nominator. Um, thank you to, to council and staff. Um, none of the things I've done could have been done alone. Um, I formed great friendships, comradeship through all, all those efforts. Um, and I enjoyed every minute. So Anybody that has ever worked with me, I thank you for pushing me and making me a better person. Um, that's all I can say. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you very much for your time, everybody. Okay, I, I have a nice note here. We're just going to go back to uh, <laughs> 3.1 and 3.2 and uh, review the minutes. And everybody's okay with the uh, regular council meeting minutes of March 14th. I'll have someone please make a motion to adopt those. I'd so move, Your Worship. Thank you, Councillor Harrison. All in favor? Okay. And then the uh, agenda and priorities committee minutes of March 21st. Councillor Bates. I'll move those. Mayor okay. Berkeley. Thank you. All in favor? So we will now move on to 5.2 and RFD with energy management projects with Director Jenkins. Thank you, Mayor Berkeley. This seems kind of dry after all of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, come on. All right, so this report, we're looking to inform council of um, our intent to pursue energy efficiency projects as individually internal, internally managed scopes of work um, and to approve payment of, of the audit cost. So um, the town has pursued a process uh, through Alberta municipalities who has partnered with Train Technologies uh, to have an investment grade audit prepared, uh, which identifies ways to reduce energy consumption uh, and costs at various town facilities. Uh, so back in February of 2021, the town entered into an agreement with Train uh, to complete an investment grade audit of seven town facilities. Uh, the cost associated with this work uh, being $28,000 um, was allocated from the 2021 contingency uh, should a capital project not be pursued. So basically, um, we didn't pay for the audit cost up front. 
um, with the anticipation that if we moved forward with any of the identified capital projects, the cost of the audit would be rolled over into that, um, into that cost. Um, so in addition, as part of the, the audit, um, we also uh, had TRAIN perform a structural engineering review of the arena and curling rink to assess their ability uh, to accommodate roof-mounted roof solar uh, photovoltaic. Um, so that assessment was an additional $10,000 cost. Um, so as we pursued um, the, the project, um, we uh, brought this forward to council in the fall a couple of times, um, and the, uh, the capital project was identified as part of the 2022 uh, capital budget. Uh, through the town's administration review of the project contracts, um, it has been determined um, that the preferential way to approach um, the identified uh, projects uh, would be to do it independently of, of train and Alberta municipalities. Um, so pursuing the projects independently uh, will result in significant capital cost savings um, as project management contracts and agreements as well as communications will be handled internally. Um, it is estimated at approximately uh, $20,000 in savings. Uh, the individual uh, energy conservation measures will be broken into smaller projects, which uh, may also allow for greater uh, local procurement opportunities. Uh, so the projects identified in that audit are upgrades to the library lighting uh, and controls, operations and park shop lighting and controls, curling rink lighting and controls, and town office lighting and controls, uh, as well as the replacement of eight furnaces at the arena, um, and the installation of HVAC control systems um, at numerous facilities, and then the installation of 175 kilowatts of solar PV uh, at the arena, or not the arena, sorry, fire hall, curling rink, and an expansion of the town office um, installation. So basically, uh, the motion we're looking for uh, from council is to approve the payment of the $38,000 for the investment grade audit and the structural engineering investigation um, performed on behalf of train technologies um, from the 2022 capital budget. Um, so we do have to still pay for the, the audit and the uh, investigation that they did, um, but that will pursue the, uh, the projects identified in the audit um, as individual projects. Thank you, Director Jenkins. Could I please have someone make that motion? I'll make that motion, Mayor Berkeley. I'd like to move that council approves payment of 38,000 for the investment grade audit and structural engineering investigation performed on behalf of train technologies from the 2022 capital budget. Okay, thank you, Councillor Maceros. Any discussions, comments, <coughs> Councillor Harrison? <coughs> thank you, Your Worship. Uh, just one question. We've identified seven or so projects from, from the audit. And maybe this question is further down the road, but what projects are we planning on doing? Because it, it's part of a budget, right? 2022. Uh, do you have any idea which one of these seven or all of them, or if any, are going to take place this year? Um, we will try to pursue as many as possible. Um, my guess, projects one through five are quite straightforward. So the lighting upgrades at the facilities, as well as the furnace replacements at the arena. Um, and then the HVAC and the solar PV will likely be projects that have to go out to full RFP, so they'll take a little bit longer. Um, but we still will attempt to uh, complete, if not all of them, most of them in 2022. Okay, just a supplementary, Mayor Berkeley. <clears throat> so of the five that are fairly simple, you'll be bringing those back uh, for a, a motion on approval of the budget to can complete those? Um, depending on the size of them, those first ones um, are likely below our $75,000 RFP um, threshold, um, where we go and get three quotes essentially for the projects um, and go from there. Okay, thank you. Councillor Bates. Um, so the question I have is, if you could just refresh the the original train project that we did approve was all a lump sum of how much the the actual capital cost of the project right. uh 1.3 million and then this report is telling us we could save two to 
200,000 plus yes. from that. Mm -hmm. So that overall all umbrella will be used to cover all these other. Uh, we should emissions. come in under budget from your from the capital allocation um, due to, to bringing it okay. uh, in-house. Oh, it just seems like a bit of a surprise that it seemed like the, the overall train project was was thought to be that it would all happen. But it just, it, yeah, it's catching me a little bit off guard. It, it didn't, but. Mayor Barkley, Councilor Bates, your, your question. I think the couple things that have occurred, one is the grants, uh, several are not available for us this given time. A, a lot of time has elapsed since we started this process and no fault of council um, and the town itself. Um, so we, we've gained knowledge internally during this length of time. Um, but we also have contractual numbers that I won't share publicly that have come to light in, in recent terms, uh, a little bit more accuracy on, on the contracts that we've, uh, uh, we dug into to, to determine what those are all as part of the in-camera discussion, um, which is resulting in us to build internally the capacity and knowledge to run these programs ourselves, especially if the grants aren't available. Uh, as for my comments and, and supplement to, to Megan's report is, is if we can allocate grants and maximize our tax dollars, that would be the best way moving forward. Thank you. Councillor Wink. Uh, no, I'm, I'm, okay. Thank you for that clarification, um, CEO Becker. I did want to ask about the grants, but I will save that until our next conversation. Thank you. Anything else? Okay, well, we have a motion on the table. So all in favor? Okay, carried. Thank you. We will move on to 5.3 and RFD for event stage slash trailer. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so we're looking to um, uh, receive some direction and discussion from Council to help establish a vision um, for the event trailer slash stage that was identified um, through the de budget deliberations for the 2022 operating budget. Um, so Town Council did allocate $25,000 uh, within the budget for the procurement of an event stage or trailer. Um, administration has done some preliminary research on options and costs and is seeking uh, council input on desired objectives and functions of the unit. Um, so at budget time, we sort of threw out the idea of an event stage and event trailer um, without a lot of discussion and um, consideration as to what everyone's um, vision was with respect to that. So we're just looking for some conversation on what the function of the unit would be, um, you know, who we would be allowing to utilize it to help us narrow down what might be the, the most effective option um, with effect or to achieve uh, council's desired results. So the report does just include some visuals as to what could potentially um, be, be part of that vision. So yeah, just looking for some feedback and, and thoughts from council. I don't think Director Dunham or Councillor Dunham wants to say anything. So, <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Highstead. Yeah, um, uh, I look at the first picture and um, and then the second picture, and I don't know what twenty five thousand dollars is paying for, right? So that was my question: is number one looks really awesome, number two looks not the same. <laughs> well, and, and that's part of even when we started to research, because even just a trailer, um, I know there was um, Pride used a trailer that was donated from a um, community member. I believe the, the health appreciation, same thing, was just sort of a, a flatbed trailer. Um, so that was sort of where we started on the research. And, you know, yeah, you can get a, a flatbed trailer for $25,000, but is that what the vision is? Is that really something that that we need to have? Um, so yeah, really looking for some so, fleshed out thoughts. So so the ones in the the report are not associated with any direct cost. Um, Twenty five thousand <clears throat> isn't going to get us. It'll probably get us the second one, the stage there, um, or more. Um, but again, what are what are the top uses? When are we going to use it? Um, what do we what do we really need it for to help us? Start to evaluate um, some of these options. 
Yeah, and, my, and I guess my last concluding comment would be is um, let's not, let's get something that's going to be really well utilized. And I don't really think $25,000 is going to, uh, I'll be honest, cut it with uh, number two. I, that's just my opinion right now, but just kind of curious where everybody else is at. Councillor Dunham. Thank you, Mayor Barkley. Through the <laughs> Jenkins. Okay, so <clears throat> thought a lot about this and <laughs> done my own research. I guess the way that I look at it is we can see our immediate future. We can see in the past what we've done for events, festivals, what perhaps the needs were, but we need to look down the road with what's happening in this year and mention that I've heard of other things that's happening through the WIC committee and different things. I think we need to look forward a little bit. And by having something small in scale, I think that we'll find that the community is going, going to be out renting larger stages. So the way I look at it is why don't we through what we've already allocated um, and maybe an opportunity for a funny other, do something a bit larger, something that we can anticipate what's gonna happen in the future, that we can rent out to the community events, concerts, et cetera, that will fulfill the needs of not just smaller, because with those, with the stage that you see in the first picture, a lot of those can be scaled. So you may, might get three by six pieces. You may not need all those, so you only need three, three by five for certain events, but at least we have the capacity or we have the, we have the unit that would be able to be utilized. Um, as far as the management of it, I mean, that's a, that's a big, big piece. And I guess that would also be dependent on what it would be rented out for, because if you can rent it out for a thousand dollars, then obviously then you have the ability to cover the costs or the, the storage, the people that would take to, to set it up, that sort of thing. So, I mean, for us, I think the first thing we need to decide which it is and then, you know, manage that other part afterwards. But as a individual who's involved with several different festivals, I know that we would very much be willing to rent and we'd rather keep the money in the community here than, than take it to Red Deer or Calgary or rent a you know, a flatbed trailer, which, you know, does suit needs, but it's not ideal for the situation. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Dunham. Councillor Maceros. Thank you, Mayor Parkley. Uh, Councillor Dunham, are you saying yeah, the first picture can be expanded so we could start smaller with this one and then you, you, can, you can grow it out or? Well, the ones that I'd looked at is that you buy a certain amount, but you wouldn't need to put all those up. So say it was just like on Main Street and you just needed a very small sort of bandstand, you could scale down that okay. and only use part of it. Or for something like Pride, where we've got a lot going on or a concert, you would use not only the stage, but if it came with the rigging and that sort of thing as well. So because if we're gonna if we're gonna go into concert and things like that, it would be nice to have the rigging to be able to have lights. And, and so it's versatile. Yeah. The first one. Okay. Well, I'm I'm saying the one that I had looked, the ones that I'd looked at. I mean, there's there's many suppliers of it, so I'm not. I don't want to speak for administration and the research that they've done, but what I had looked at. So. And one more question. I'm just wondering how this first one would be transported. <laughs> And that's part of, again, the conversation. Once we have a, a better idea of what, what we are dealing with, then we'll have to consider things like storage and transport and set up and all of that. Okay, um, I, I will agree that the first one is obviously the one that, that jumps out. Um, you know, I've thought for years Centennial Park could use a stage um, envision concerts taking place down there we started to see a little bit of that last year but we only have that one tiny bandstand that rotary did several years ago and having been on the end of having to try to find a stage for events it's very difficult and um, you may get a flatbed but do you have steps and it goes on and on and on so i also like director jenkins the fact that this has a cover considering our weather from time to time so um, I would like us to look at something like that first picture. And um, as far as management, I, I guess I personally foresee, if possible, the town doing that. I think liability reasons, we'd want to be 
looking after setting that up and taking it down and and uh, again rent it out to organizations. I mean, Canada Day is probably the first thing that comes to mind. And you know, for a couple of years, I believe there was a trailer that came from Calgary Stampede. I think Andy Reberger would know about that. And you know, what, why are we doing that, right? Let let's have something here. We've got enough things going on in this community now to support this. And I think we even see more things that we had a proper stage to host things on. So those are that's my opinion. Councillor Bates. Well, the only question I have, obviously, from the pictures that are here. <laughs> It's easy to see what would be the most desirable, but anybody have any idea what that person would cost? Because I can't believe it would be less than triple what. Yeah, have. easy that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's that's probably about the ballpark. Even if you say say a hundred thousand dollars, yeah. And that was when we started to do the research. We kind of saw that yeah, twenty five wasn't going to get us a whole lot more than basically a trailer so Harrison. Yeah, just a comment mayor barkley thank you through, through to council it, it seems like the need is definitely there and in the future it's going to even get more and more so i would support the concept of of, of a stage uh, i'd like to see administration come back with some some costs uh, uh, the bottom one, I, <clears throat> I don't think that's that's what we need. Uh, I've always said it only costs ten percent more to go first class, and with the kind of events that we're planning and uh, into the future, I think that first that first picture, yeah, that that one there, Kara, uh, you know, I think that's the way we way we need to go. But I like to have some costs. I I I, I think twenty five thousand sort of gets us in the door. Uh, I think at the end of the day, it's probably gonna be considerably more than, than 25. And then there's the business case on how we're gonna rent it, who's gonna manage it. I've been involved with a stage in the past in a previous municipality, and it can go sideways pretty quick. The maintenance of it, the construction or the setup and the tear down, these are very expensive pieces of equipment. And if it's not set up properly, you can you can destroy it pretty quick. So. I think we need all of that as a package, uh, Director Jenkins, uh, to, to come back with a little more information. But the concept of, a, of a, an event stage, I fully support it. Uh, we just need more information, or I need more information. Thank you, Mayor Barkley. <clears throat> thank you very much, Councillor Harrison. Councillor Wing. Um, thank you, Mayor Barkley. And yes, I would just concur with uh, my colleague, Councillor Harrison. Um, these, yes, these are very sophisticated pieces of equipment, even though they just look like a bunch of pipes and flooring and skirting. So yes, it, I think the business case around the cost of maintenance, the cost, I mean, the booking system, the maintenance, the safety, the storage, all of that, but um, then the liability piece of it. So ensuring that organizations can afford to rent something like this, because by the time you add up the sum, the sum of all parts, it can be pretty expensive. So I am fully in support of doing something, but we need to go in with our eyes wide open. Thank you. Do you need a motion, Director Jenkins, for anything or we'll just direct administration to go back and research and bring back? Yeah, that'd be fair, mm -hmm. Your Worship. Do, sorry, excuse me, Mayor Barkley. <laughs> sorry. Uh, do we want to talk about the kind of size that we would be looking for to give them some size parameters? Or I don't. I don't know. I, I, I'm thinking maybe come back with some different sizes. The flexibility. I think that Councillor mm -hmm. Dunham spoke about that um, have some flexibility to. I think now that we have an idea that we're sort of looking okay. at a stage, not a trailer potentially the the cover and, and that capability that'll give us a lot a lot better sense of of being able to to get into those specifics okay thank you Councillor Dunham. so may work like thank you i'd like to make a motion that administration <clears throat> pursue options for procurement of a stage and explore management 
of that stage in the community. Okay, thank you. Anything else? Okay, all in favor? Okay, thank you, carried. We will move on to 6.1, an RFD with Director Vickers. Thank you, Mayor Barkley. Um, so last regular council meeting on March 14th, um, two reports were brought before council to pass um, bylaws. So it was bylaw 1681-2022 61st Avenue Special Tax Bylaw and 1682-2022 37th Street Special Tax Bylaw for first, second, and third readings. The recommended motion that council gives consideration to third reading was not unanimous, therefore defeated making each bylaw unable to proceed to third and final reading. We have attached the bylaw and the outline of the project um, as a reference for council consideration. So I am looking for motions um, that council accepts and gives the two bylaws, 1681, 2022 and 1682, 2022, third and final reading. Okay, thank you. Could I have someone make the first motion, please? Councillor Heistam. Chip, uh, I recommend that council accepts and gives uh, number 1681-2022-61st Avenue special tax bylaw third and final reading. Okay, any discussion? Okay, I'm just going to um, kind of reiterate, I guess, my, my stance. I'm gonna to continue to oppose this, the both these. So my, my comments go to, to both of this. Um, and I'll just take, um, couple of minutes here just to re reiterate some of the points I made last time. So first, I, I believe it's important um, for us to build relationships with our business community and maintain a principle of fairness. So there have been other road improvements in town. Um, we've taken gravel roads and they've become hard surfaces, but we haven't applied this special tax to them. Um, 57th Street comes to mind and around the community gardens. Uh, secondly, the amount we are asking for is 0.04% of the overall budget, so it's really not significant, and I would rather see us build goodwill and work with the business community in the industrial park, uh, and maybe potentially they would, you know, support the town in, in our endeavors going forward on some of the projects we're looking at. Um, I was privy to seeing one tax invoice uh, last year, I guess it was, and, and the increase that they were seeing from this special tax by law was approximately six and a half percent, so it's, it was significant. Um, thirdly, the, the economic growth is certainly one of our top priorities, and I'm very confident in the direction we are going with our community economic development strategy and the revenues uh, will grow due to the economic expansion, and that's also going to support population growth which in turn supports the greater community. So having had meetings with some of the industrial park businesses recently, uh, there's certainly potentially for significant expansions down there that are going to take place. And that benefits the whole community, not just a corner of the community. I also respect, of course, administration and all the work that they have done on this issue, especially Director Kennedy. I know it hasn't been easy and certainly, you know, he's been the recipient of some criticism. But my stance is really about collaboration and building goodwill and acting as a partner with our valuable stakeholders in the industrial park. And it's also about a philosophy I have that we should all share in the investments made to better our community. And a road improvement project, in my opinion, is just one of those examples. So I just wanted to share my reasons with you for why I'm uh, opposing this, this bylaw. Councillor Harrison. Uh, thank you, Mayor Barkley, and just a question through to administration. As we start to develop the, the additional industrial area there and put in services, uh, will those potential service or potential buyers be assessed a special tax for pavement, or will those roads be paved uh, as part of the, the lot sales? Like, how is that going to work? Or is is it too early to tell? I can start, uh, Mayor Barkley, the Councillor Harrison. It's really up to Council how you wish to build out your um, the idea of a new industrial park. If you want to 
charge full value of infrastructure, that'd be the cost of, of the developer. If you want to subsidize that, that would be subsidized by the taxpayer. So it's really in the prerogative of council to uh, understand how you would fund that development. Okay, thank you. Councillor Bates. So I'm, I'm confining my comments to this to this project and as I look back, I, I believe that uh, there was complete transparency and, and that the um, tax bylaw that was passed by previous council was more than fair to all of the industrial frontage users. Um, it was collaborative at every stage. We, we met with them and I do remember they initially didn't have a lot of interest in curb and gutter and drainage, which um, administration felt was essential to the longevity of the project. And so what was created was paying for just a fraction of the actual paving and not the curb and gutter and, and the base of the roads. Um, so I support the, the tax bylaw for those reasons. And do believe that most of the properties were purchased with the full knowledge that they didn't have paving. And uh, that was probably entered into the pricing of, the, of their purchases. And I don't believe the general tax base should, should have to, to foot the, the bill. And it's, it, it is just a fraction. So for those reasons, I would support the bylaw. Okay, Councilor Maceros. Thank you, Mayor Barkley, uh, through to administration. I'm just curious about why this is the first time we've had, um, oh, it's not? Oh, I thought I heard someone say that this is the first time we've had a special tax on. Mayor Barkley, Councilor Maceros, uh, this is the first time, I understand for a special tax, the town has applied almost a similar tax. According to the MGA, it's uh, called a local improvement tax. Local improvement tax um, can be called upon by, in this case, residents. Uh, residents called for a uh, local improvement tax to, to pave a, a big back lane. So they're benefiting specifically to that, that adjacent area. Um, the difference is um, they are asking for it. In this case, council asked for the special tax bylaw. There's, there's a little bit of difference between the two. Uh, at that time, uh, previous council looked at both of those bylaws and, or sorry, taxes, how they, how they could be potentially introduced. But uh, for what I know, we have not applied a special tax bylaw previously. Councillor Heistad. Yeah, um, this, I, I just want clarity here. Um, and, and I'm gonna ask uh, CEO Becker. I, I know when I was on council, we did a special uh, tax bylaw on 42nd street for a back alley but i think this is just correct this is the first time for an industrial zone correct uh, mayor barclay councillor heistad i believe the the bylaw or the application you're refer referring to is called a local improvement tax where a development so you, you get a certain base a certain model which so it's probably a gravel back lane uh, where those residents group together to ask council to, to apply a local improvement tax. Uh, this is a special tax. Um, so there, there are some differences as outlined in the MGA. Um, and I believe um, the town has not applied a special tax previously. Okay, thanks. No, I, I think we need to, in my opinion, we got to move on no matter what the paving's done. And, uh, uh, you know, from listening to uh, council it's um you know my decision is to uh to accept this and and move on and and look at you know as to the collaboration and that um uh, i gotta trust the, the council previous council the work of previous council as well as administration so thanks for that okay thank you any other comments okay there's a motion on the table then we'll vote on it all in favor opposed and then uh, we'll go on to the second motion. Can I please have someone make that? Councillor Bates. Yes, I'd be willing to uh, make the motion that we accept and give 
uh, bylaw 1682-2022-37th Street Special Tax Bylaw, third and final reading. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? Okay, all in favor and opposed? Correspondence. Thank you. Anybody have any questions about any of the correspondence or any comments, CEO Becker, that um, anything you want to highlight? No? Okay. Okay, I'll just have someone please make a motion to accept the correspondence as information. Mayor Barkley, I'll make that motion. Okay, thank you, Councillor Durham. All in favor? Thank you. And now we'll do council reports. We'll start with Councillor Bates today. Okay, um, so since the the AMP meeting. Um, I attended the Alberta Police uh, virtual presentation, the bureaucratic version, um, the Chinook Sage engagement. Uh, I also attended the business visit to Firefish, and my my I had no idea of their size and sophisticated fabrication operation. Um, and then had a brief. Zoom with the CAO um, and the Director of Operations with the uh, Water Commission um, and their business planner uh, looking at water forecasts for the future. And the only thing that I've really got going on this week is plans to be the top shift at the trade fair on Friday. Okay, thank you. And Councillor Heistad. Thanks, Your Worship uh, uh, Barkley. I want to first off, I want to say it's nice to be back. I was on a week vacation and it's, uh, you know, sun is nice, but it's always nice to come home too. And I want to thank Councillor Harrison for uh, looking after my duties for age friendly. And um, I'm looking forward to the next meeting that we do have um, a, our administrative meeting to, to discuss uh, Centennial Park where I've, you know, I've come back walking and it, things seem to to be the same old same old so hopefully we can get some solutions and work together on that thanks a lot thank you and councillor harrison <clears throat> thank you mayor barkley uh, i also attend excuse me attended virtually the alberta police virtual presentation please for us uh, i want to let council know that i'll be uh, <clears throat> leaving for vacation or annual leave April the 16th to the May the 9th. And it's been a trip that's been uh, in the making for three years. We finally got to be able to go. So uh, I won't be taking my phone or anything like that. So uh, I'm be the first vacation I've had in, in a number of years. So I'm gonna go and just put my feet up and let somebody else do the driving. So uh, also uh, prior to that, uh, April the 10th through the uh, uh, 13th, I will be in Calgary at uh, the Alberta Seniors and Community Housing Annual Convention. So it, I hope to get back for the business tours that CARS put together for us on the 13th, but it'll depend on what time we get away from our our, uh, our trip there to Calgary. I, th and I think uh, I think that's that's about it. Um, yeah, I think I think that's it, Mayor Barkley. Yeah. Great, thank you. Councillor Maceros. Thank you, Mayor Barkley. I also attended the Chinook's, Chinook's Edge engagement and went to our first uh, emergency advisory committee meeting last week, which was very excellent. And I had an opportunity to test out the services this weekend and I have to say that uh, they were there in record time. I was just can confirm that <laughs> they're doing a good job. And um, going to the police, oh, that's next week. And I'm going to be uh, with doing a shift with Gavin at the trade show on Friday. Perfect. Okay. Councillor Dunham. Thank you, Mayor Barkley. 
<clears throat> on the 21st, I also attended the APPS transition setting engagement. And then in the evening, the Chinook's Edge Board of Trustees engagement, which was nice to meet them and just hear a little bit about what's going on with Chinook's Edge and our agreements that we have in place. On the 22nd, I was also part of the Firefish visit and tour and had driven by it several dozen times in the last few years and always wondered what happened in there. It was really interesting to be able to go in to see the operation and actually get a real understanding of the scope of their work and what their output is and what their future needs are. And uh, it's definitely a, a manufacturing business that we want to keep in town and, and work with them. Very, very interesting. Um, on the 23rd, we had uh, the age-friendly housing. We had the late life homelessness and affordable housing for seniors um, Zoom meeting, which was very interesting. Learned a lot on that. And then on the 24th, I as well attended the emergency advisory committee meeting. And I look forward to understanding more about it, but it was great to see everything that they have in place and the evolution of it and, and where it's going, not only for our municipality, but also regionally what they're doing. Thank you. Councillor Wing. Thank you, Mayor Barkley. Um, I guess we, last week seems like a long time ago. Um, I enjoyed our meeting last Monday with the trustees and administration from Chinook's Edge School Division. Um, I was working actually at Chinook's Edge when it became, well, I was working at Red Deer County Schools when it became Chinook's Edge, and it was a real coup for the town to actually have sent the central office of a newly amalgamated school division located right here in Innisfil. Um, and actually, I met Kara, the lovely Kara, when we were working for the Chinook's Edge School Division, and that's a really long time ago, so it was lovely to see some people. It was a really long time ago. Um, I attended my second virtual learning session on age-friendly housing last Wednesday, um, as my colleague, Councillor Dunham, has said, dealing with late-life late homelessness and affordable housing for seniors. Um, as the fastest-growing demographic in the province, it's imperative that we keep these issues in front of us throughout our strategic and operational planning. I'm looking forward to a busy weekend with at the trade show. I will be in attendance at the town booth, the chamber booth and the library booth. So keep up. <laughs> um, and just a final note, I will be on I will be on vacation from April 16th to the 27th. However, I have chosen a location that guarantees me the Wi-Fi will be available in my room on my and I and on the beach. So I will be present at meetings if I can make the connections work. Okay. That's it. For okay. Me, All right. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Um, I as well attended Chinook's Edge uh, School Division meeting. It's always great to get together with them. Um, also the emergency management meeting, like certainly uh, manager Leaf keeps us in uh, good stead with everything emergency management wise. Um, of course, it went to Firefish with uh, fellow council and also CEO Becker and I met with uh, Malcolm's contracting, Howells, as well as Bowringer. They were uh, extremely interesting visits. Um, on Friday, we had a discussion with um, CEO Becker and Director Jenkins with Alec Balancescu and Shelby Strand on the subject of pollinators and um, maybe some opportunities in our community going forward with that. So uh, looking forward to the trade show this weekend uh, there Saturday and um, looking forward to seeing lots of Innisfalians out there and, and enjoying themselves at the trade show. So with that, will um, anyone have anything they want to add or? No? Oh, if I could, I, I'd like to, uh, bounce the idea of council administration about distribution fees on our utilities. Uh, I've had a number of or a few questions and it really came to light when I started working with uh, Erica and her group uh, on looking at the uh, utility bills that we're getting at the historical village and whether or not there was savings. And, you know, the energy costs are quite minor compared to the distribution fees. And I certainly don't understand. And if someone can explain to me how they calculate those, uh, it, I would certainly appreciate that. Because each bill, the distribution fees are different. There's one for a variable and one for fixed, and they seem to be all over the board. So I guess I'd like to know, would it be prudent to have ATCO or EPCO or Direct Energy come and talk about their how they calculate their distribution fees. 
because that's the major part that's probably 80% of your bill is, is the distribution fees on it. Or am I stepping over the line here? No, I, I don't think so, Councillor Harrison. I mean, the you know, it's for the infrastructure, right? Then mm -hmm. that, that's what the distribution transmission fees yep. pay for. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we, we could have somebody come in, or you can call the energy company and and uh, ask them. Well, you're talking distribution fees, and not franchise fees, correct? Not franchise yeah, fees. Just I, distribution. I fully understand yeah. that, and the yeah. public understands yeah. that. And we set that or yeah. we agree to that mm -hmm. distribution fees. We just get a, a number that's on the bill. And I would certainly like to be able to explain to. You have know, have the, you called like the, no, the energy no, provider? Okay. No. no. Like I, I would maybe, I don't know, CEO Becker, maybe start there. And if, um, you know, you don't get satisfied responses, then we could maybe get more education on that. Member Clayt, uh, Councillor Harrison, Council. Uh, yeah, that I would strongly recommend contacting the respective utility companies, but we're also working on engagements with Fortis, um, likely ADCO, but um, Fortis is close on nailing a day to come and speak to you about franchise fees, uh, their company, um, anything you wish to ask of them, but uh, anything to do with the utility bill, certainly there's a number on the bill that you can certainly get that information directly, but both will likely work as well. Are they, um, well, do you know, are the historical village on the fixed rate or variable rate? Like it's a variable rate. And that's, yeah, okay. and we'll leave it at that. It, we've just started to investigate that. And it came to light here in January okay. Well, with- uh, Okay. I guess my first bit of advice would be to call the utility company and look at the fixed rate because it could be a half of what the variable rate is. Yeah, we're, we're working with, the Alberta municipalities plan here. So I think, you know, we've got that fairly covered. It, it's just these distribute the distribution rates and I'll certainly call on behalf of the historical society, but um, yeah, it just seems like it's, but if Fortis is gonna come, I, I'll certainly table that for, for when they come and maybe they can, because I'm afraid if I phone the utility company, I'm gonna get a, a call service and it's gonna be somebody that you know, who do I speak to at Fortis, you know? Well, I, I, it... Yeah, I would just phone billing and ask for a, an explanation. I'm, you're probably not the first. <laughs> and I, I would start there, Councillor Harrison. And then, like I said, if that's not satisfactory, then we can take it further. But I would definitely start there. And in fact, I think there's even an explanation on the bill, if I recall, which maybe not be un, may not be understandable. <laughs> I just need to know why they... How they calculate the distribution fees. Thank you. On a different note uh, regarding Councillor Harrison, uh, Mary Barkley, I know uh, talking to Councillor Harrison with his extended uh, time away, it'd be prudent for Council to consider um, uh, to proving Councillor Harrison's absence from Council related responsibilities from April 16th through May the 9th. The reason I'm suggesting that the MGA does have specific outline of how many respective meetings that councilor could could be vacant or absence from without uh, council needs to acknowledge his, his absence. Okay, so would somebody like to uh, make that motion to approve councilor Harrison's vacation time? I'll make that motion. Okay. Thank and, you. And I do have a question. So councilor Harrison, will you be letting any of any and all of us know of, of, if we're needed as a backup because sometimes meetings happen or don't happen? Yes. Yes, I'll be going through uh, once I get the schedule of the meetings. Yeah, you'll be. Yep. Well, we wish you the very best. And I know you've had that plan for a long time. So. Well, thank you very much. And thank you for the approval. Yeah, it's been a bucket, a bucket list. Trip. We, have, we haven't approved yet. We haven't voted yet. <laughs> oh, I thought I'd slip that in. <laughs> now the pressure's on. <laughs> we'll be going into a by-election if it's not approved. So. <laughs> Not a threat. <laughs> okay, yeah, quick, thank you very much uh, quickly for your all consideration. In yeah, quickly, all in favor? <laughs> there you go. Carried. <laughs> Carried. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, we'll just go over um, upcoming events. Okay, and just have a motion to accept this as information as well, please. 
I'll accept this as information, Mayor Barkley. Thank you, Councillor Maceros. All in favor? Okay, and then a motion to go in camera. I'd so, oh, I'd so move, Mayor Barkley. Okay, thank you, Councillor Harrison. All in favor? 